We are slave servant of Allah. Be brothers. A Muslim is a brother to the other Muslim. He's not supposed to oppress him. He's not supposed to transgress against him. He's not supposed to defeat him. He's not supposed to turn his back to him when he need his help and his assistance. He's not supposed to defame him or look down upon him. Doesn't matter what color, what clothes he's wearing. Because the taqwa, the piety, the fear of Allah is in the heart. It's not what you're wearing. It's not your turban. It's not how short is your soap or your kameez. Reality of taqwa, fear Allah is in the heart. Only Allah can see it. Allah can tell about it. Our, our clothes, our status, our degree doesn't make difference with Allah. So the Prophet say, at taqwa ha huna, here in, in your heart. After this, the Prophet وسلم, said, it is enough sufficient, it is enough sin, it is enough corruption that you did in your day that you look down upon your Muslim brother. Because he, have no, he doesn't have the same skin color like you. Or he doesn't drive a car like you. Now you look down upon him or her. You already did enough haram by doing this. And after this, the Prophet وسلم, protecting the property and the blood and the honor of the all Muslims. Doesn't matter if you know them or you don't know them. Doesn't matter if they are in the same country or not. Everything belong to a Muslim is sacred. His blood his property, his honor. Anything belong to the Muslim is sacred. And you have to respect it and honor it. Don't touch it with his, without his approval or her approval. Subhanallah. Where is the Muslims and where is this hadith today? Hasad is haram. Raising the price over each other is haram. Boycotting one another is haram. Oppression is haram. All these things been forbidden by the Islam. And this is not the characteristic of a Muslim. This is not the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the Muslims. Muslims are supposed to do their best to maintain brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam. And we should be concerned about everything that bring about brotherhood and sisterhood and love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hidayah, the guidance that we live according to Islam, to implement the Islam and to live like such a beautiful hadith that Allah make it to be our way of living. Let's look to the second hadith after this, hadith 1293. To show you how important it is, good manners, and how Islam discourage bad manner. Here is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This hadith which he reported by Qutbah. Ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, call. Can a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya kool? Allahumma jannibini munkarat al akhlaq wal a'mal wal ahwa wal adwa. Akhrajo al tirmidhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from objectionable characteristic deeds, passions, and disease. 
سبحان الله اللهم جنبني منكرات الأخلاق والأعمال والأهواء والأدواء The words or vocabulary اللهم أو الله Again a form of making dua أو الله or يا الله اللهم جنبني Keep away from me منكرات from منكر objectionable the منكر is single منكرات is plural and you see the الف and the تاء here make it plural because it's feminine like مدرسة مدرسات مؤمنة مؤمنات منكرات الأخلاق the behavior and the discipline and this also is a plural and the single is خلق والأعمال is the plural of عمل deed deeds أهواء desires want and seek and wrong things والأدواء illness sickness diseases From this hadith, we see that the Prophet وسلم, is concerned about keeping away from bad manner. And for the Muslim to learn the ad'iyah and the supplication of the Prophet وسلم, to use it. And also the hadith shows you the importance of a Muslim avoiding the wrong things and the wrong manner. And one of the ways is to call in Allah. So Allah will help you. وَاسْرِفْ عَنِّي سَيِّئْهَا لَا يَسْرِفْ عَنِّي سَيِّئْهَا إِلَّا أَنْتْ O oh Allah, keep bad manner away from me. Because no one can keep it away from me except thee. So your trust in Allah that you call in Allah. Asking Allah because you know you could not do it in yourself. So you ask Allah to assist you. To enable you. To give you help that you stay away from it. And also bad deeds. From shahwat, desires, sins, haram stuff. So we are not only talking about physical things, but we're talking about the spirituality also. Because the hawa, the desires, the evil thoughts, all the things is illness. So you want to be protected from all kind of sins, all kind of illness, physically, mentally, and spiritually, because the heart also can get sick. We know this. Okay, inshallah the next hadith, we are not going to comment on it, the hadith is weak, 
حديث 1294 Don't talks about don't dispute with your brother this is weak as well as the next hadith which reported by Abu Sa'id about khaslatan there are two characteristics this hadith also is weak so we go to hadith number 1296 an قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المستبيان المستبان ما قال فعلى البادي ما لم يعتد المظلوم المستبان ما قال فعلى البادي ما لم يعتد المظلوم أخرج مسلم نيريت أبو هريرة من الله بيبليز وزهم that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying when two men revile one another curse one another what they say is laid to the charge of the one who began it so long as the one who is wrong does not outscore the vocabulary al-mustaban from Sibab, Sabba. Sabba means to curse. A Sab to curse. Using bad language. So Al Mustabban, the two that are cursing one another. Ma what? Kala. Both of them said. Al-Badi or Al-Badi, the one who start, start first. Ma Lam, as long as not, Ya'tadi, transgress. Al-Mazloom, the oppressed one. The hadith is shows the permissibility to defend yourself and to deal with equal way if somebody transgress against you. And the sin will be upon the person who started. We understand that Islam allow us to pay the people back accordingly. And he told, فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ Whosoever transgress against you, so do it back to them equal. Now, it doesn't matter if it's individual or groups or countries even. Islam doesn't tell you somebody slap you in your face, give him the other cheek. If you want to forgive your brother, if you want to understand, let it go. This is a good characteristic also. 
your reward will be with Allah but as we understand some people he gives them the second cheek now he will book your eye if you book your eye there's the next thing you understand will take your clothes take your shirt from your back so Islamically somebody break your hand or your arm you have the right to break but you have you can break only the same arm with the same length but not that somebody break your arm you go and break his two arms this not Islamically now so you have the right to defend yourself so if somebody curse and you curse him back equally and the sin will be on the person who start and there is an incident happened in the time of the Prophet sallallahu a man had cursed Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Bakr radiallahu an he didn't reply so when Abu Bakr start reply to the man the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa got up so he been questioned about it and the Prophet sallallahu he told him when he was cursing you and you was quiet the angel was defending you and when answering back so now when you start to revenge the shaitan had came But if a person revenge more than what been done to him, now he will have a sin also. Okay, last hadith for today, inshallah. An Abi Sirma. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من من دار مسلما داره الله ومن شاق مسلما شاق الله عليه نايرتب أبو سرما the prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying he who causes harm to a Muslim will be harmed by Allah. And he who acts in a hostile manner against a Muslim will be treated in hostile manner by Allah. Vocabulary Man who Dara Causing harp Muslim a person who accepted al Islam. Darahu Allah. Allah will harm him. Woman and whosoever shaqa make things hard. Muslima towards a Muslim. Shaqa Allahu alay Allah will deal with him with the same
if a Muslim causing any harm to another Muslim for no just reason in his property or in his honor on himself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a revenge for this and Allah will harm him and will bring hardship to fall in him and harm on him and whosoever disputed against Muslim with no just cause and they transgress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send hardship and difficulty on him so from this hadith we understand that is prohibited in Islam to disturb the Muslims by any means without just cause in his body in his property or in his family or anything belong to him and whosoever do something with no just cause to another Muslim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the one who's going to deal with the person who did so and start with it with this inshallah we're going to stop here for today I'm going to allow five to ten minutes in case somebody have a question inshallah or comments or correction beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness for us and all the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from all ill manner and wrong behavior that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a useful knowledge and make us put it in action insha'Allah like thank you for being here today may Allah reward you bless you all and will be good that you can check on the brothers and sisters usually come to the classes I'm sure they are not here today because something came up like sister dua and tasfiyah and so so it will be good that we can ask make sure they don't okay inshallah this is part of brotherhood and sisterhood and inshallah I leave the mic free now for anybody who have comments or concern Jazakumullah khairan Mark is free. Any question at Chess Islam? You stream? On pursuit of knowledge I assume that is no question so inshallah the hadith if it's da'if that mean you did not narrate it as narration from the Prophet okay but the continents of the hadith if something supported by Islam in Quran or hadith you have to do it as example the hadith that for today's class don't dispute with your Muslim brother don't make jokes with him even if you're making jokes so we have to look what is the result of disputing with somebody usually the shaitan comes in the middle next thing we're boycotting one another next thing that you understand maybe hatred so there is another Hadith or verse it may go with the same meaning so we practice But we did not use this hadith 
as an evidence, neither we say the prophet said. Okay? He did not say the prophet said. The next hadith, as example, talks about being major, being stingy. Is this part of Islam to be stingy? Of course not. It's supposed to be a person who's spending, be charitable, okay, be giving. The more he gave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. But we learn this from other injunction in Quran and Hadith. But I'm not going to use the Hadith as a support to something. Neither I'm going to say the Prophet وسلم, said such and such. Alright, thank you very much. Zakumullah khairan. Looking forward to see you inshallah Saturday at 3.30. And like I explained to you, all the hadith, uh, all the classes, the weekly classes and the daily classes. We have about three or four classes daily. So for any of you who uh, considers himself to be a seeker of knowledge or want to be a seeker of knowledge, we encourage you that you go to adlionline.com and you go over the classes. And alhamdulillah, brother Abu Jamila did very good job making sections and categories and video separate from audio and the week classes and the weekly classes and where it's been recorded is alhamdulillah is very organized very good and we're not asking you anything you understand to pay to download the information so please help yourself okay talk to you next time inshallah if it's not tonight, it will be Saturday. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.